Welcome to Bristol. Today I'm in the beautiful city of Bristol, having a little look around and visiting some of my favourite spots. I used to live here for six years, so I've got loads of places that I absolutely love. I thought I'd film a few of them today, so if you're visiting Bristol, you'll know the best local places to visit. Bristol is the largest city in southwest England, and it's somewhere with a really extensive maritime history. Nowadays, it's a multicultural, quite like hip and happening city with an incredible food scene and yeah, just a lot going on. It's a really cool place to be and I used to absolutely love living here. Unfortunately, the reason that I moved was because house prices were far too expensive. But I'm excited to be back today to see some of my favourite spots. So, let me show you around. Right now, I'm in Castle Park. This is named so because it's home to the ruins of an 11th century castle. It's right in the heart of the city and it's a really nice place to relax. Uh, it's really popular in the summer with picnics. And yeah, it's right near all the hustle and bustle, but it's a nice, relaxed, kind of green lung to the city. But I'm not gonna lie, I think one of the best things to do in Bristol is eat. So I'm gonna go find some food now. So there's loads of amazing restaurants in Bristol. One of my favourites is definitely Chili Daddy's. They do really authentic Sichuan noodles um, and you can get five spice levels. So I always get spice level number five. <laughs> smells amazing. I've just been at St Nicholas Markets, or as the locals call them, St Nick's Markets. These markets have a long history spanning back to the 18th century, but nowadays they're one of the best places in the city where you can get different types of global cuisine and you can shop for gifts and souvenirs to remind you of your time in Bristol. They're in really beautiful buildings called the Exchange, and the Exchange also has this really interesting clock that has two minute hands. One is GMT time that the whole country operates on, and one is Bristol's own time zone. It doesn't use this time zone anymore, but Bristol used to be 15 minutes behind London. <laughs> now I'm gonna head over to Stokes Croft, which is one of the hippest areas of Bristol. Stokes Croft is another area that's known for its excellent restaurants, but it's also famous for its nightlife scene. I used to love coming out here when I was a student in Bristol, and for its street art. Walking around is like an outdoor art gallery. There's so much colourful murals and just different pieces of artwork, all with lots of different messages. I'm just gonna have a little walk along Bristol Harbour now. This is like the centre area of Bristol, and then the harbour side sort of leads up to the west part of Bristol. And um, yeah, it's just a really nice waterfront area. There's loads of waterfront cafes, loads of bars and restaurants and there's a few boats as well which were always quite interesting so let's go and see what we can find something amazing about bristol is that everywhere just has art so even like the museums the restaurant everything is just bedecked in murals and it adds such so much color to the city just behind me is the SS Great Britain, which is a definite Bristol highlight. You can't visit the city without checking out the SS Great Britain. She was designed by Ivanbar Kingdom Brunel, and when she was created in the 19th century, she was the fastest and most powerful ship at the time. She operated on steam, whereas a lot of ships were still sailing ships. She was used as a migrant clipper to take immigrants over to New York and then later on over to Australia. She was eventually left in the Falklands Islands and kind of retired there, but then she was brought back to Bristol and now she lives in the Dry Harbour as a museum and sort of exhibition where you can see what life was like on a 19th century migrant clipper. I'm not going to go today because I've been in loads of times before, but it's really fascinating and definitely worth checking out if you're in Bristol. And as a side note, this is probably my favourite pub in Bristol, the Grey Barge, which is on a boat. Of course, you can't visit Bristol without checking out the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which was also built by Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel, even if it's from a bus. But I do recommend going up to Clifton and seeing it close up. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed it and want to see more videos about travelling in the West Country. Bye!